Welcome back, everybody, to the Nerdcore Podcast, the podcast reviews the movies and talks that nerd shit. This is episode 717, and it is your review of Jonathan Glazer's Under My Under Under the Skin. Jeez, Brad, you got under me on the that sea. one. Yeah. And of course, this is Nerd Shit. You're going to hear the host show my wonderful co host, Brad Young Yoda. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday morning. Rolling yeah. bread in the morning. I have a head on, so you know what that means. It's the morning. I did not shower yet. I don't have, what's it called, uh, my hair nicely, what's it called, uh, done. And I just brushed my teeth, like, not even, like, 20 minutes ago. So, I just woke up a while ago. So, yeah, man. Um, doing this in the morning because could not do it last night. But, as always, we're continuing on with Horror Month here on the Nerdcore. And today we're going to be talking about some uh, sci-fi psychological horror yeah i mean it, it, there's something going on with this movie yeah it's different yeah but before i can get into it we're live early and ad free over on patreon.com slash nerdcore where you can get this episode live so you can chat with us in the chat room ad free before it drops on the day after at 12 p.m central time with an ad for everybody else in the public sphere. You can join our Patreon by going to join patreon.com slash nerdcore and you can pledge to tiers as low as $1 a month for a lot of other cool exclusives. There's more other tiers. But before we can get into the review, Brad, how are you doing today? Doing well, doing well, Raul. I am, uh, I am I'm, 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 uh, I had my breakfast, had my coffee, um, <laughs> and now I'm podcasting, so. Yeah. Any plans for today? Uh, we're going to another... Another little place with the ants. Another tourist trap. Another well, not as bad. Well, actually, it might be as bad a tourist trap now. Ten years ago, it wasn't as bad as it is now. Um, yeah. so we'll see. Have your, aunts, have your aunts never been to Arizona? No, they have. Why? Why do you keep going to the tourist traps? I mean, because it's the only. I mean, these are the places to go around here. Oh. That are close. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, they're kind of cool. I mean, the the one we're going to do today is my preferred destination just yeah. because you can uh you can do the the whole uh what do you call it when you're at airports and you're looking at people okay people watching you do people watching all right because there's some weird shit <laughs> i guess when in arizona right well, yeah yeah but um yeah man it has been a um it has been a morning for me just What's it called? Got up, watched the rest of this film, and just got ready to get on here. I did not stream last night, so I'm going to stream today for sure. And um, later on tonight, I have to. I'm going to go watch The Apprentice, uh, the political satire film of about Trump. On also, uh, I, did, I just want to say after that, thank you all for tuning in. Now we will play 25 minutes of Pavarotti. Yeah, yeah. And we lost all viewership. <laughs> lost all viewership. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, they're going to go see that tonight, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully, um, I get, I'm get. i going to stream some, some Resident Evil 3 today, see how much more I can get through, and, yeah, uh, see how much more I can suck. <laughs> it's, it's always how it ends up being. I mean, it's video games. Yep. Yep. Um, would like to at least get through most of it. I, I kind of, I kind of had a, I kind of wanted to get to two games this Halloween season, but it look yeah. at the rate that I play and the rate that I suck. I, th I think we lot. need to get Luis on to play more lethal company just for the, the holiday season. Well, I have, um, another, I have a new SSD so I can redownload lethal company now. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be the modded version though. Cause I already deleted all that stuff when I had to. When I had to make space, so. Okay. But um, with that said, uh, Brad, we should we should probably get into this thing, right? Yeah. All right, man. I, Without I further ado, if you have not seen Under the Skin, you should probably get out of here. We care about sports, but if you don't care about sports or you've already seen the film, go go ahead and stay. Either way, how it goes, this is your one and only spoiler warning, and it is in effect in a five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Today's episode of the Nerdcore is brought to you by SeatGeek. Whether you want to see your favorite band, sports team, or comedian, SeatGeek has you covered. We're proud to be partnering with SeatGeek to offer you $10 off your first order with code the Nerdcore. That's $10 off your first order at SeatGeek.com with code T-H-E-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P-S. 
So take a seat at your next live event with SeatGeek. Thank you. Now let's get back to today's video. Under the Skin is a 2013 science fiction film directed by Jonathan Glazer and written by Glazer and Walter Campbell based on the 2000 novel by Michael Faber. M Michel, 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 Michel Faber. It stars Scarlett Johansson as an otherworldly woman who preys on men in Scotland. The film premiered at, Tell at the Telluride Film Festival on the August 29th in 2013. It was released in the United Kingdom on March 14, 2014, and in other territories later in the year. Laser developed under the skin for over a decade. He and Campbell parted back from, from an elaborate special effects heavy concept to a sparse story focusing on an alien perspective on, of the human condition. Most of the cast had no acting experience, and many scenes were filmed with hidden cameras. Under the Skin was acclaimed for Johansson's, uh, Johansson's uh, performance, Glazer's direction, and Micah Levy's score. It received numerous accolades and awards was, and was, was named the best film of the year by various critics and publications, appeared on many best of the decade lists, and was ranked 61st on the BBC's 100 Greatest Films of the 21st Century list. It was a box office failure, grossing around seven million dollars, seven million U.S. dollars on a budget of thirteen point three million dollars. Yep. <clears throat> um, cinematography by Daniel Landin, edited by Paul Watts, of course, music by Michael Levy, and it sits at about an hour and forty-eight minutes. And yeah, it made seven point two million dollars on a budget of thirteen point three million dollars. Not a, not a success at all. Um, and if I'm c correct, Michael Levy, yeah, he did do the Zone of Interest as well. So he's been the one who's been working with Glazer on the last couple of films. Okay. Yeah. Um, Brad, I've seen this movie before, so I'm going to de de defer to you. What are your initial thoughts on the on, on Under the Skin? Um, for Under the Skin, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I thought it was great. Um, I'm I'm kind of surprised it didn't get more at the box office. But again, sci-fi's even if they're horror sci-fi's, they don't generally do well. We just know that in the theater, sci-fi's yeah. never garner as much as they may or may not or should. Um, Scarlett Johansson's great in this. She plays basically um, she's the trap. She lures men to their death, and um, the special effects in this are crazy. Yeah, when when the guy pops like a balloon, like I didn't expect that. And then we yeah. just see that they're feeding this like meat machine, this alien meat machine. Pretty much, I'm yeah. like, this <laughs> this is kind of dope. Um, but I I just think the the overall nature Scarlett Johansson plays this character. She is an alien. She goes there. She like does not care if a man is good or bad. He's meat. Um, and we see that with like the the surfer with, with that whole scene where she just leaves a baby <laughs> like the whole family died she just leaves the baby um but i i think this is cinematography wise it's beautiful <clears throat> i am i am becoming more and more like enamored in films that hold your attention but have very little dialogue and that's this film and i i am starting to appreciate that more and more i come in contact with films that explicitly they don't have a lot of dialogue and so they have to depend on what's shown on the screen and how the actors portray it and i think this is one of those that does it well yeah um i love <clears throat> i love this movie man I, I think it's 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 a great film from jonathan glazer also i noticed yeah he pretty much does start all of his films like that where it's just a black screen with the with the score playing for a bit and then it actually leads into what the film is Cause it's like the same thing with zone of interest. It just has the score playing for like, like what, two, three minutes. And then it actually starts. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, man, I, I, I really like this film. I love this movie. Um, it's very slow. It's methodical. Um, I but, love, but, but that, but to me, that's like the, kind of the point is like, mm -hmm. she's, she's preying on men. Like she's, you, you know, stalking them. And, and that's kind of the point. Yeah. It's a very interesting, like, I, I know that Jonathan Glazer done, didn't, what's it called, doesn't, he didn't make the movie for it to be feminist, but it is pretty feminist. And, it, like, the spirit of this movie is very feminist. I mean, it's it takes the premise of what women have to go through every day in their lives where they feel like 
they're not safe walking down streets and they cannot escape this um this violent this violent nature of what can happen to them and he turns it around and makes the woman who well well the alien who is you know disguised as a woman the one who is actually making men feel unsafe and yeah. making them uh making putting them in danger uh, well, and, and and you start out in that it's an alien and so yeah. that's how she is but she starts becoming more human more human like understanding humans and yeah. it's very interesting to see that dynamic and basically how an alien goes from eating its prey yeah. into kind of falling in love and then being the complete opposite and then it is the one stalked and preyed on yeah and the shift happens when she meets adam pearson yeah yeah um who and he shows kindness the, yeah the deformed man um oh. well, well that, after that's that, his after character that. name yeah sorry but yeah, yeah. Deform, where she she sees the pain in yeah. him and she understands what he goes through and she lets him go yeah well, for him only because go. she sees herself in in the mirror and she realizes like oh like I'm like them. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm human like them and I'm luring these people and some of them deserve, some of them she feels like deserves it, but some of them don't. And Adam Pearson's character was like, he was just, he's just this guy who's been shunned by everybody else and he's just been ignored and he's been looked, he's been looked at the way that she's been looked at by everybody else as yeah. just me. And then um, after that, she meets, the guy who basically shows her kindness, the oh, yeah. very kind gentleman who brings her home because he feels like you know she needs help. Um, yeah. and they end up having this relationship, but she gets very, very confused. Um, the first time she has sex, yeah, because in the whole movie, everyone wants to have sex with her, and that's well, she doesn't the let them, <laughs> yeah, yep. Um, and I mean, it's the first time that she ever she notices her genitals. So she's kind of like, what the hell are these things? Like, what what am I what what do I what am I holding here? Yeah. And um, I think that it's a great movie. I think the score is fantastic. Now, do I put it on the level of the zone of interest score? No, no, no. That one's better. Yeah. Um, but I think that this is like really solid work from Jonathan Glazer. And I think that it leads up to creating, you know, what his best movie is yet. I, th I think this is a very, very good sci-fi. Yeah, uh, honestly, it, with with the horror as, and I don't know about a horror aspect, but this, this is a horror film, Brad. Psychological, this is horror, Brad. You tell I, I me, mean, you're I, walking I mean, down the street just for you to get seduced. I mean, I'm, honest, look, Brad. Okay, I'm not gonna tell on myself, but I'm falling for that. I mean, honestly, though, yeah, I guess if I'm walking on and then I die with a heart on, that but probably might That's be pretty a very fucking bad scary, day. Brad. That's a pretty bad day. Yeah. Because <laughs> all these guys had heart ends as they go yeah. into this uh, fucking quicksand of yeah. ink. <laughs> for me to say that this isn't scary is for me to just pretty much turn my back on the women that we know in our lives and say, like, yeah, what y'all go through a day is not scary. This is pretty <laughs> okay. fucking okay. scary. It's, it's a bit scary. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit fucking scary, Brad. Um, Especially the ending. I, I thought that was the biggest horror right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, because so she goes to this film and she gradually learns how to be more sympathetic and become more human just for her, just for it to get thrown. What's it called? It turned turned on her. Yeah. And she meets somebody who's actually evil. Somebody who actually wants to harm her. And she wants to physically and, and you know sexually assault her. Yeah, and she's never had it that way because she has been through ninety percent of this movie, she's been stalking her prey. Yeah. And then she has this turn towards the end, and like you said, she she meets, you know, someone who wants to attack her. Yep. So it's like, but of course, uh, you know, the alien does get the the one up. <laughs> the alien gets the one up, and. Um, yeah, I, I just I, I live I love this film and I think that that Johansson's really good in this movie. I, I think she's like really scary. Like she really does kind of get into this character. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, I know a lot of y'all are thinking about it. Yes, this is her first fully nude uh film. This is the first time she's ever appeared fully nude in the film. And um yeah, this is like she she just like really embodies the alien who doesn't who doesn't even like feel comfortable in, in her skin and doesn't think that she's real and then as she progresses she becomes this 
human with feelings and with sympathies and and becomes you know one with the human condition yeah i i mean she's basically a lure to all these men to their doom that's she she's trolling for men yeah what do you think about the cinematography brad it's very naturalistic like the zone of interest is it's very it's gorgeous i i mean some of the scenes in there uh the the ending scene where you kind of see you know he's the the motorcyclist i i'm guessing he's like just kind of the the keeper he just makes sure they don't get caught um that scene uh throughout through i mean i liked when they're walking through the building and there's no lights and it's just oh, yeah. black yeah. like i thought that was cool and then the whole they start sinking in to the trap yeah he glazer very much like i've i've noticed now it's like he's very practical lighting guy um and it's not out of like well i don't want to call it laziness because that's not the right word to say um because there's a lot of effectiveness in using natural and practical lighting um i just feel like sometimes some people don't want to work with practical with with uh people just want to work with natural and practicals because they don't want to set up lights and yeah. they don't want to what's it called experiment with lighting but the way that he does it in the way that he you know um eliminate some of those sources to create this eerie feeling with his lighting is just really good. And I, and yeah. I love that about his movies. And I think I, that in this one, it really works well. I mean, when she's in the forest in the end there with, with the light coming through the trees and all that, and then she, she gets into that building. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think the lighting has effect on it. I think cinematography wise, it, it does a great job. Um, I don't think this film got enough love at the box office as it deserved, honestly. Yeah, I just I don't think this was a film that was going to ever make probably a crap not, ton of money. Probably not. Very, I like, mean, it's a, it's a sci-fi. It's very independent, very art house film. Yeah, and it, it, when I saw it was a sci, it's like a sci-fi horror psychological film. Like, it's a sci-fi. Sci-fis generally do not do well. Yeah, it, they generally, if they're not big IPs, I don't think yeah, they really they're do not well. Star like that, Trek so or I'm Star just... Wars, they're not they're not doing well. Yeah, <clears throat> but um. Huh. I think that that you know it, it makes its impact and it does what it does and I, I, I don't think, think Glazer was ever concerned. I don't think Glazer was ever concerned about making a lot of money with this. No, and, no. Um, I, I I think he was just concerned about making a good movie and he, he yeah he did that. Uh, I think the score goes into helping the vibes too because you're right. I, I mean, as a horror movie, yeah, there's some creepy freaking scores going on in this. Oh yeah, bro. And I don't, I don't know if he did this one before Zone of Interest because I mean he doesn't really have like a like a what's it called like a massive filmography here. Yeah, he he did this one. Um, yeah, he did. Yeah, he ten years later he does Zone of Interest. Hmm. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, he did a couple shorts in between there, but like feature length, like Zone of Interest is like his second yeah. feature. No, it's his fourth. Um, okay. He did Sexy Beast in 2000, Birth in 2004, Under the Skin in 2013, and then um, to the 2023, he does Zone of Interest. And we know Zone of Interest is his biggest. Film. Yeah, I mean, that's his best work yet. Yeah. That's, his, that's his fucking masterpiece. Uh, I think that... Um, I think the movie's really good. Uh, I just... I don't think I put it on the level of Zone of Interest, and I think that, uh, it, it, you know, sometimes it is, you know, a bit, what's it called, draggy. But I mean, it's a it's a good slow burn, and it's one that really does, what's it called, uh, reward you for sticking with it. But um, I think it's I think it's a, it's a it's a fucking great film, man. And I I wanted to pick it for horror month because it's a horror film, and because we were so high on the zone of interest, and I wanted to check out another one from. I wanted I wanted to rewatch this, but introduce you to a different film mm -hmm. from uh, from Jonathan Glazer. So what's your final verdict, Brad? Uh, I'm gonna give this a eight point seventy five out of ten. I think I think it's really good. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much on the same wavelength as you, Brad. I'm I'm going eight point seventy five out of ten. I think it's a great film. Yeah, and I I think it's it's a great work from him. I think that he's such an incredible director, and he really does create his atmospheres like like really well. He uses everything at his disposal. 
Mm-hmm. There's nothing I mean, that he's letting like like pushing off to the side. And uh, you know, for a lot of people in this who aren't professional actors, I think he got the best out of them he could. And then you had Scarlett Johansson, who of course put on an yeah. ultimate performance. I um, love that. <laughs> I love that he uses hidden cameras, and he it it isn't until they get to the home that he tells them like, "Oh, you're in a movie." <laughs> so I was what. One- it's so very I, real. It'll well, put, so I was wondering that as I'm looking at these crowds of people, I'm like, there's no way this is all like just, you know, actors or background actors. There's no, no. no. Some this of these people are acting crowds. way too accurate. Yeah. These, like the people who are, who, what's it called? Who are banging on her wall, on her door and her window yeah. during that scene in the dark. Like that feels a little too yeah, real. That one, I, I don't think they put Scarlett Johansson in that that predicament like that i think the crowds with the soccer the soccer team i think that i think them not getting out of the fucking way as she's trying to park that's real (laughs) i don't i think the guy's trying to break into her van i'm 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 not gonna say it's not like they didn't maybe but i don't think they would put scarlett johansson in that situation with like eight guys trying to break into her van yeah yeah, but um, like all the other guys who have gone with her in the car, those are all hidden cameras, Brad. Oh, okay. Yes, there's like maybe Adam Pearson is an actual actor. Um, he actually. But, but all, called, the, uh, all the previous guys, like the dude dancing. Those are, those are <laughs> they're not real people. The fuck? They're not real actors. I'm sorry. Um, um, Jeremy Quick Williams uh was a what's it's a road racer. More like a road racer. Yeah, but no, but um, there's some of them. Like, how does he get them to be nude? Like, yeah, the check, I, the, the swimmer, regular... he's real. The swimmer's a real actor. He's a he's a check actor. Okay. If but I was, like, um, but but no, I'm just like, like the guys who like get nude and get caught. Like, I mean, you gotta be really comfortable. <laughs> yeah, um, Andrew, he's an actual actor, and Adam Pearson is an actual actor. Okay. Everybody else were pretty much just people being picked up on the street. I mean, yeah. just I mean, it's just one thing. I like I don't know if I could go like into this film and be like, yeah, you gotta follow Scarlett Johansson with a heart on. Yeah. Like what? Well, <laughs> unless that was shot separate. Like it also makes me wonder what the rest of that take looks like. You know, because she says, like, oh, it's about 30 minutes from here. Yeah. Like it's got to be a long take, and I want to know what the rest of that take yeah, looks what like. The, what the what the rest of that uh you know that conversation with? Because everybody's got to know that Scarlett Johansson, right? Like, hey, Scarlett Johansson. I don't know. Been a fucking, well, I guess it's Scotland, so maybe not. Maybe they're just yeah. like, oh, that's a good looking lady. <laughs> yeah, um, but I did like I read that um, Adam Pearson and Scarlett Johansson had like a competition on set of who could say the most the most dirty jokes, and Adam Pearson won. But I he did, said I, that. But he said that Scarlett Johansson was was a pretty good challenge for him. <laughs> I just I find it um kind of hilarious that if these guys did get picked up, they have no, they care nothing for their safety. None of them. Just to, you don't get in vans with strangers, even if it is like Scarlett. A hot chick. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Fuck it. Yeah. It's just like. You know, there could just be like five guys in the back ready just to like. That's a fucking man, bro. Rob you. (laughs) But I mean, it goes to show how much like since we're not always put in that position, Brad. Yeah. How much we don't really think about things like that. Yeah. And I'm just watching them go. These guys are fucking stupid. (laughs) And how we're like, we're more, we're so, we're much more aware of things, Brad. And the way that the world works for other people. Yeah. That I wouldn't feel comfortable accepting a ride from anybody. No. I, I mean, well, I yeah, don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not very trusting. In yeah. And that's why I'm not a big fan of Uber. I'm like, you know, I, I hate that I have to use Uber because I it's mean, like, I don't trust myself being in the car with somebody I don't know. And I've never had a ride with. I mean, I have, I, I personally, like if it came down to it, like, Oh, you're not getting me to my destination. I'm just starting to throw for hands. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to seat, jail. So I'm in the back seat. So <laughs> yeah, you know. I'm punching them in the back of the head, man. Like, yeah, you know, there, there's things that I'm taking. Yeah, I got my seatbelt on. Yeah. We're, I'll, I'm, I've got a 50 50 percent chance I'll survive the crash if we crash here. Yeah, I'm taking the seatbelt around them and yeah, you know, but um, but yeah, no, uh, other than that, I've always had a great experience with Uber drivers, but I, it's yeah, kind of the I, reason I why care. I've always 
I've never felt comfortable taking Ubers With, and stuff yeah, like that. And I can I can see if you're a woman, I can see that too. Yeah. Like uh, there's been so many horror stories I've read about women in Ubers, and then the Uber just keeps going and doesn't go anywhere. That Uber yeah. has literally made an app where you don't have to call. You can you can press a button, and it it'll it'll alert the police. Yeah. So if there's an app for that, then there's too much of that happening. Yeah. Um, but with that said, that concludes our review of Under the Skin. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Check us out on thenerdcore.com, Twitter at the Nerdcore, Instagram, Instagram at the Nerdcore, Letterbox at the Nerdcore, TikTok at the Nerdcore, Patreon.com slash the Nerdcore. You get this episode live early and ad free before anybody else gets to watch it. Check out our Discord link in the description below. So you can discuss uh discuss with us about under the skin. And all of John and Jing Glazer's other films. Um, it really sucks that the man doesn't make like a ton of films, so we can't really give him a proper month. But well, I mean, I'm yeah, well, I'm we'll down to just keep up. watching. We'll keep picking them up. Yeah. Um, also, we want to thank you guys so much for watching on YouTube. Make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss another review that drops on the channel. And make sure you leave a comment, tell us what you think about this film. What do you think about Jonathan Glazer? And yeah, would would you have been caught? I won't lie, man. Part of me thinks I probably would have been caught, man. I probably would. I wouldn't. You wouldn't. <laughs> but single bread? Walking the streets of Scotland alone? Man, that was pretty stupid back then. Maybe in the car, not bread, but maybe in the club, yes. Yeah, may- it, well, I wouldn't Just be walking the nights of uh, the, Sc- the streets of Scotland alone? Cl- yeah, you probably wouldn't have caught me again there. No. But in the club where she's like, yeah, no. See, that, see, that's I, I wouldn't be in a club though. I'd be in in in, in a bar somewhere. I wouldn't be in a club, yeah. but but in a bar, maybe. Yeah, but um, make sure you leave a five star review on your favorite podcast app of choice, and make sure you're following us on that favorite podcast app of choice. All that could help us out so much. We want to thank our wonderful patrons; they make it possible, and we love them so much for being the great people that they are. Without y'all, we're just not doing this at the level that we are. And of course, we want to thank our wonderful executive producer Shane. Where can they find him, Brad? You can follow our friend Shane at twitch.tv slash XSRK or on Twitter at thrifted.il or go buy something from the Suppy God at depop.com slash prison city vintage. Yeah. Uh, without further ado, we will catch you guys on the next episode. We're going to be discussing a climax from Gaspar Noé. And uh, with that being said, Brad, let's go ahead and get them out here. All right, Raul, the Amin host, as always. Thank you to all those who join us in future chats. We know this is early, so Stacy, sorry we missed you. Thank you to our listeners out there, work? our Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you to our listeners out there, our Patreon supporters. We appreciate each and every one of you. And to end this episode, I think it's only right to say um, don't get in vans with strange women, especially if they look like Scar- Scarlett Johansson, because it's a trap. It's a trap, guys. <laughs> Scarlett yeah. Johansson is not driving around in a van for your ass. Yep. Young Yoda out.